A recent study published in the Canadian Medical Association Journal suggests that women who take NSAIDs or anti-inflammatory drugs may have an increased risk of miscarriage if taken early on in their pregnancy. Dr. Moritz is here now to, to flesh out some of these findings. Thank you for being with us right. today. Okay, so first off, we're talking about Advil. What else are we talking about, these anti-inflammatory drugs? Uh, ibuprofen, Motrin, Aleve, Advil, that whole Very class common over the counters. The, very, very common. Now, what's interesting is this study was done in Canada. They are not over the counter in Canada. There's still prescription drugs in Canada. So they were basically able to look at women that took them mm -hmm. and women that didn't take them. And really what they found, I won't get into all the details right. of the study other than to say it was very well done. And what they found was that woman, women that took them for whatever reasons they did had a 2.4 times higher miscarriage rate than women that didn't. What, is it, well, what does it do then to the uh -huh. two? Uh, Why do you always ask these questions? <laughs> the tough questions. The tough well, because questions, a lot of people want to know because right. if, if, this is, if this is a matter that they've always taken these anti-inflammatory drugs, it's going to be a huge adjustment to their lifestyle. Well, why do people take these drugs in general? Right. A lot of women take it for menstrual cramps, uh, they take it for aches and pains that they may get. The women that really need to take this and that are on it long term are people with rheumatoid arthritis, okay. with medical conditions that basically they can't, I don't want to say can't live without it, but they're in so much pain every day that they take these. Okay. And, and we'll have to address those group of women. But I think for right now what we're talking about is just like when somebody is ready to get pregnant. They usually stop drinking. They avoid certain things. We're going to need to add this one onto the list. Okay. Not trying to get people scared because I really am totally against that as an OB myself. It's not to make pregnancy a disease. But <laughs> if, if non-steroidals are going to increase your risk of miscarriage by that much and you may find an alternative and don't need it, it makes sense not to take it. Okay, well then, going a little bit deeper then into the study then, what did they, they, they looked at women that did require it, whether they had arthritis? Right, so they would take women with arthritis that were on it, mm -hmm. and they said, let's look at women with arthritis that aren't on it. And they would, again, every time they would look at different ways of looking at the data, they would keep on seeing this increased miscarriage risk. And when I read the article, I was saying, what, you didn't do this? And sure enough, they did. So it was really, really well done. It couldn't be done in this country because you wouldn't be able to tell who took it over the counter. But it's not available in Canada over the counter, which made it, was, which is stronger. So what kind of alternatives then can women, if they, if, 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 they, if they are concerned about this being a factor, what else can they do then? If well, the not first thing is, you know, in pregnancy, it's always a risk for, versus benefit. If you must be on non-steroidals while you're trying to get pregnant or during pregnancy, you need to talk to your doctor and, and see if there is an alternative. If there is not, the recommendations from this article is you have to stay on them. Okay. So what are some of the alternatives? The only alternative that's really safe and been proven to be safe is basically Tylenol, acetaminophen. That's okay. it. Now, wow. okay. it doesn't work so great for rheumatoid arthritis. It doesn't right. work for joint pains and things like that. Um, so that that's going to be a problem. Let me ask you this then. When a study like this comes out, how, how do you have this kind of a conversation with your doctor if, the, if your OB isn't familiar with this kind of a study? I, I, I mean, is it obviously it's your responsibility to know that you as a patient, as an expecting mother, right. but at the same time, if your OB isn't familiar with this, does that raise any red flags? No. <laughs> I mean, is, is a study like this a significance? Oh, uh, this is going to be significant. Yeah. This study is going to be significant. And, you know, a lot of times, and I'm a practicing OB, patients will bring things in to me before I even get them. And you have to say, that's interesting, let me read it. And yes, you know, you're right. So you, you're you, gonna you, start that. Obviously proactive. With, with the internet and with shows like this, people are sometimes getting the information before the doctors are, because the doctors are overloaded with so much information coming in and sifting through it. Uh, doctors get their information from the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and shows right. like this sometimes. Right. No, yeah. well, well, and, and these studies keep coming out and obviously giving right. more information. Right. And that the, the interesting thing is that you need a doctor to look at them and to ferret out whether it's a good study or it's just a bunch of junk. And there is a lot of junk out there. Is this a first trimester concern only or throughout the entire pregnancy? Well, that this second trimester and the third trimester, that's, a, that's always been a no-no. And right. that's for some heart issues and kidney issues. So that's been clear. The issue here is before conception and right around that time of conception, and that was not known. And a lot of people take these non-steroidals. Think about, oh, I got a headache. Take an take Advil. An Advil. Oh, right. I got some cramping. You don't even know if you're pregnant or not. Leave, you're right. Boom. You take it. Right. Exactly. Right. So I, I, I think the, the, the word is, if, you're, if you don't need to take it for major medical symptoms, I would avoid it.
Good bottom line. Good, that would be a good bottom line. Good recommendation right there, Dr. Moritz. Good. Thanks for being with us today. We appreciate it. Like it.